Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Today we are opening up a baseball card exchange authenticated 1989 upper deck box. You can check out the bottom. It has the authentication sticker from the baseball card exchange out in Indiana, certified by Steve Hart, the owner, who always does great work out there. And the FASC stands for from a sealed case. So originally back in 89, these boxes weren't sealed. You just got a case, you cracked open the case, and you, you took out the boxes, and they didn't have the cellophane on them, but Steve witnessed this case coming directly from a sealed case, which is why he was able to certify it as never being searched. So what we're after in this is obviously the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. If we can pull that out of here and get it thrown in one of these one touches right away, well, that card is sold for anywhere between $600 and $900 as a PSA 10 on eBay in recent months. So hopefully we can find that. You can see this is the high number series, which means that this box contains the cards one to 800 in the set. So it has all 800 cards, which slightly reduces your chance of finding Griffey, but still it's, um, I hope to find him. We'll see. I opened a box of these before and did not find him about a year ago. I think it was. So Scott D is in on this break. He's got the top left. Then on the top right, we got Hoya N. Then on the bottom left is JV, and the bottom right is Robert. So what I'll do is I'll open a whole stack of packs. Scott will get this top left, and he'll get every card pulled out of there. And hopefully for Scott, that stack will have the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie in there. So let's get started and see what we can find. 1989 Upper Deck. That might be the, I don't know, might be the year that some people will put their thumb on as the year that changed the card industry forever as with the infusion of premium cards into the market would forever change everything. This was the premium set in 1989, as you guys remember, with the nice foil wrappers. So, Scott, let me get your pack or your stack out for you. We're going to put Hoy's name on his. We're going to put Robert's on his and Jay's on his. Move this a little bit off to the side. All right, so here we go. These are your packs, Scott. Nine packs per stack. There's 36 packs total. This is what the wrapper looks like in case you've forgotten and haven't seen any of these opened recently. There's also one hologram in each one of these. This is what the back of the packs look like way back in 1989. And now let's get to ripping these open and see what we can find. 89 was a pretty good year for some decent rookies. You had not only the Ken Griffey Jr., which we already mentioned, but you had John Smoltz, who would go on to be a Hall of Famer. You've also got Craig Biggio, who we're keeping an eye out for. There's Wally Backman. Gary Sheffield. There's John Farrell. Jack McDowell. Mike McFarland. Some of these guys you will definitely remember from your childhood. I started collecting in 1989. I'm also hoping to find Randy Johnson, by the way. You get two of these holograms. Check these out, little stickers. I used to put these on my binders when I was in grade school. Matt Noakes. We've got a, there he is, Kurt Gibson. This is uh, right on the heels of him hitting that historic home runoff, Dennis Eckersley, in game one of the World Series on two bad legs. No Griffey in that first pack for Scott. Here we go. Number two. Pack number two, we've got Kevin Romine on the back, it looks like. I always liked this design, the design of 89 upper deck. I always thought this was cool as a kid. And even in years to follow, I always thought 89 upper deck was better. I don't know, visually, there's Robin Yount. He's a Hall of Famer, the 1990, 1991, even 1992. This card was a pretty nice one back in the day. Nolan Ryan, the three-timed action photo. That was some, I guess that was a big deal for us back in 1989. We thought that was pretty cool. That's not the only Nolan Ryan card we might find. There's Jerry Royce. Andres Galarraga. There's also a popular Nolan Ryan card of him throwing a football that for some reason everybody thought was really awesome. I guess it was kind of like, a, you know, tied in all of the uh, football fanatic card collectors out there. They all must have wanted that card as well. We've got Paul Mauter on the back of our third pack. He's a Hall of Famer, former Twins manager. There's knuckleballer Tom Candiotti. John Russell, former manager of the Pirates, years ago at the beginning of the decade, maybe like, I don't know, 2010, I remember he was the manager. Very soft-spoken guy. Rick Cerrone, Will the Thrill Clark, 
Julio Franco played until he was almost 50. He probably isn't in good enough shape. He could probably still be playing. There's Sandy Alomar Jr. This was a hot card back in the day. Everybody was all about Sandy Alomar Jr. He had a very nice, solid career, but never became the mega star that we thought he was going to back in 89. There's Paul Molitor. And now on to the next pack. I should probably show you the back of these cards as well. We haven't opened a box of 89 per deck in a long time. I did like the back of the cards also. One complaint I did always have with Upper Deck and Don Russ is they would only show us the most recent five years of a player's career, so we wouldn't be able to see their complete batting record, which to me, as a 10-year-old, 9, 10-year-old back then, that was important to me. I used to like to see every year. I used to actually study my baseball cards to learn more about the players, more about the game. There's Storm Davis. Corey Snyder. Team checklist card. There's Ron Robinson. Rolando Rumace. There's John Cruck. Still looking for Ken Griffey Jr. Card number one of the set. The Griffey. Everybody was all about that card. And there's been some speculation to how many of those cards are actually out there. Some people think it's in the millions. If you've seen the uh, documentary Jack of All Trades... They um, seem to think that there are millions and millions of those Griffies. But it is still quite a valuable card despite the overproduction. There's Marvell Wynn. There's Alvin Davis. Jamie Moyer, another guy who played until he was almost 50. Wally Backman once was hired as a man major league manager and then fired before ever managing a game. I believe it was with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Around the turn of this century here, back in like, what, 2000, 2001, something like that? I think he was hired and then let go before the season started. Much like Carlos Beltran was this past offseason. It came to light that Backman had some DUIs, I guess. There's Dennis Eckersley. I already mentioned him once today. There's Will, Will Clark. These holograms are flying out everywhere at me. There's Daryl Strawberry. Still looking for our good buddy, Ken Griffey Jr., Chris Carpenter, rookie card. That's not the good Chris Carpenter. There's two of them. The good Chris Carpenter you'll remember from those Cardinals teams. He was a real bulldog ace-type pitcher. Three packs left for Scott. Hopefully everybody's having a great day on this Throwback Thursday. Got some sad news today. Um, you've probably already heard but Major League Baseball is suspending its season, its season until further notice with the uh, global pandemic going around. There's Alan Trammell. He's a Hall of Famer, so that is definitely terrible. Kyle Ripken Jr., Hall of Famer. Greg Jeffries. Wow, this was a big card back in the day. Everybody's all about Greg Jeffries' cards. And again, he had a nice career. It was an all-star in 1994, but never became the I don't know Hall of Fame type player that everybody was thinking about he might become back in 1988 1989 everybody spent a lot of money on his cards dropping like five bucks on greg jeffrey's cards and um unbeknownst to all of us they're printing so many of them that even if he had become a hall of famer it would still not be worth five dollars today jerry royce looks like he's about mid thumbs up there maybe about ready to give a thumbs up to the camera but it was just snapped a millisecond too soon there's Willie Upshaw. Here's the great Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer. Still looking for our Ken Griffey Jr. There's Kevin Mitchell making a play, playing some third base there. And then we also have Greg Matthews as our last one there. So final pack for Scott. See if you can find that Griffey Jr. Kevin Seitzer, professional hitter, on the back of this pack. Dave Clark, I don't know... It always bothers me with Upper Deck. It did in 1990, 91, 92, how the cards would be flipped every which way. Alejandro Pena, there he is. A lot of you guys like Chris Sabo with his glasses. Personally, I hated Chris Sabo as a kid for no other reason than um, he played for the Reds and terrorized the Pirates in the 1990 NLCS. There's George Brett, also wasn't a big fan of the glasses. Another guy, Tom Hankey, wore glasses. I didn't. I don't know. I just could not get into glasswares as a little kid, which is really weird and really strange, but that's how kids can be. So, Scott, thank you very much for participating in this Throwback Thursday. Now we move on to the top right-hand side of the box. Nine more packs looking for Griffey. Now, I did this break once before. I picked up a box of these off of eBay about a year ago. 
And we opened all of the packs up, and unfortunately, we didn't find the Griffey back then. And a lot of people were speculating that these boxes were sequentially searched back then by professional pack searchers. There's Dave Winfield, who could open up one pack and then immediately know, based on the collation of the cards, where the Griffey pack was. There's Jose Canseco. That's a nice-looking card. That was a nice card back in the day as well. Everybody was all about Canseco, 40-40 home run club and everything. There's Frank Viola. So if you are going to buy a box of 89 Upper Deck, after my experience of opening one box, definitely go for baseball card exchange from a sealed case and make sure that it was actually – actually witnessed coming from a sealed case with the glue still intact and all that good stuff. Harold Reynolds, popular analyst there. Always liked hearing his takes. Another Jose Canseco. That's his all-star card, or actually his MVP card. Jose Canseco, of course, would turn the world upside down, at least the baseball world upside down with his explosive book juiced which basically um i don't know blew the lid off the whole steroid scandal and kind of put a big spotlight on the problem in the game and canseco love him or hate him he's a big reason the game did get cleaned up how about this omar Vizquel rookie card you can only find this in the high numbered series as it is number 787 omar Vizquel will likely be a Hall of Famer someday. He just came up shy of 3,000 career hits, and uh, he is widely known as one of the best fielders of all time. How about this? John Smoltz. So you get a Viscal, probable future Hall of Famer, and then you get a Hall of Famer in the same pack. John Smoltz, what a pack. Check out the back of the Smoltzy. Well, for some reason, there's a slight crease on that card. That is very upsetting to me fresh out of a pack and it has a slight crease oh the 80s quality control not what it is today unfortunately still a nice looking card can only notice it in light light but definitely not one to send off to get graded here's our next pack Tori lavello manager a lot of ex-managers from this era around the game now there's jack morris who is a hall of famer Tim Wallach, Tom Brookins, still looking for the Griffey, Randy Myers, Ramon Martinez, star rookie. So we're, if we see that logo, well, we're going to get excited because that's the one we're looking for for Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Daly, and there he is, Tori Lavello making a play. All right, here's our next pack. Yeah, I'm really disappointed about it. Spring training's done. Possibly looking at maybe flying down to Tampa next weekend and going to see some games because flights are so cheap right now. But I, I guess the main thing here is, um, yeah, it's, it's disappointing to lose a chunk of our passion and pastime. But it's also very important that we keep everybody healthy and safe, especially those older folks. You might a lot of people, a lot of younger folks think I don't really care if I, you know, come down with this illness. It's only going to make me have a slight cough or whatever. But you know what? If you spread that to an older person. That could be fatal to them, so we all have to be responsible, and it's good that another Omar Vizquel rookie, so who are we making out? And you might have a John Smoltz rookie coming up right after this, to tell you the truth. Back to back. I'm just hoping that it doesn't last the whole season. I hope that we get at least a fair chunk of our games in like we did back in 1994 and 1995. Actually, 1995. 94, the season was canceled. We got about 112 games in, I think. There's another Chris Sabo. No John Smoltz in this one. 1995, the strike extended into spring training, so spring training started later once they agreed. And in 1995, I believe we played 144-game schedule, so we did miss some time. There's another crease. Check out that crease right there in this Claudel Washington. What's up with that upper deck, 1989? 1989, their first year making cards, so I guess they still had to smooth out some of the problems in the printing process there there's ray palacios with a humongous ball of bubble gum in his mouth dennis eckersley gene walter we'll just assume it's bubble gum for the kids out there and todd benzinger two packs left for hoy already got two viscales i mean that's good but probably not the mariners rookie that you're after there's tommy her joel youngblood who once got hits and two different games for two different teams 
I don't know if we'll see that ever again, but you never know. Another Kurt Gibson hobbling off the field there in game one of the 88 World Series. We got a Eric Davis, who was a huge star back in the late 80s. Everybody wanted to be Derek not Derek Davis, Eric Davis, including myself. I used to bat like him in the backyard with my low hands, kind of close tucked into my body and just pretend like I was a slugger. Willie Randolph is up next. We got Norm Charlton, Paul O'Neill, and two Norm Charltons in the same pack. We have a Ryan Sandberg, who is a Hall of Famer, Lenny Dykstra taking a pitch there. Ricky Horton and Gary Sheffield rookie card. And there also is an error variation of this Gary Sheffield that has the shortstop flipped around. And uh, this one appears to be the corrected version. So Hoy making out so far. Two Vizquel rookies. Uh, Gary Sheffield, a Smoltz rookie. Now we just need to find Craig Biggio, Ken Griffey Jr. Hopefully we can find them soon. And also, don't forget Randy Johnson, the big unit. We're only halfway through the box. Let's see what else we can find. Two more opportunities to find the kid, Ken Griffey. So JV is the bottom left. He's going to be up next. Let's see what we can get for J. We've got Craig Lefferts on the bottom. Felix Jose leads things off. There's Mike Harkey, who is making a living as a bullpen coach now, which is pretty cool. we got the great Don Mattingly. Should be a Hall of Famer. Probably will be someday. Now he's still around the game. He's a manager for the Miami Marlins. Marlins looking like they might be good in, uh, I don't know, sooner rather than later. Checking out their farm system. They have the number four overall ranked farm system in the big leagues. So some young talent is on the way to South Florida. And hopefully they can turn that ship around within the next year or two. Make that whole division competitive from top to bottom. Right now, it looks like the Marlins will likely end up in the basement, but they should have some fun being competitive with the Mets, the Phillies, of course, the Nationals, and then the Braves as well. So next pack, we got Steve Bedrosian and Jay Bell with the Indians before he was traded over to the Pirates. Hey, it's Michael Brantley's dad, Mickey Brantley, you know Michael Brantley from his time with the Indians, and now he's a, an outfielder for the Houston Astros. I'll tell you what, thinking about this whole Major League Baseball being suspended and starting their season later, you know the only thing that's good about it is the Houston Astros are going to be spared uh, a lot of vitriol and hatred. Um, I'm sure they are somewhat relieved because it takes a little bit of a, the spotlight off of them, but I'm sure whenever it does resume... The uh, fans will make their feelings known towards the Astros. And Jose Altuve, or some people are calling him now Jose Tatuve, to um, kind of make fun of his excuse for not wanting his jersey ripped off. There's John Smoltz again. Two Smoltzies. Bo Jackson standing over there on third base. Probably just hit a triple. That guy could do it all back in the late 80s. Power, speed, could go get the ball with the best of them. The next pack up for Jay. About halfway through his stack here. Got Tom Bolton on the back. Daryl Boston, Dan Petrie, Kevin Gross, Ramon Martinez, Tracy Woodson, Sean Dunstan, who probably could have been a major league pitcher at some point if he wasn't such a good hitter and fielder. That guy could really sling the ball across the diamond. I bet you he would have been thrown upwards of 100 miles an hour if he could get his mechanics down. But he obviously chose the right uh, career path as a shortstop because he had a nice long career in the big leagues. How about Dante Bichette, rookie card? If you don't know who he is, he was a slugger in his own right back in the day, especially when he went over to the Rockies. And if he does look familiar to you, put some long hair on that guy. You got Bo Bichette, almost a spitting image of Bo. Bo Bichette, of course, is his son. He'll be manning shortstop for the Toronto Blue Jays this year. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can produce. Looking forward to the whole team, the Blue Jays team. I really like that team. It kind of seemed like a young, up-and-coming team. Hopefully we get to see them before too long this year. I'm hoping the season – hey, Randy Johnson, a rookie card. Very nice. So we found all the good rookies now except for Craig Biggio and Ken Griffey Jr. There's the Randy Johnson. Of course, he would go on to be known as the big unit and be a Hall of Famer pitch for a very, very long time. Strikeout over 4,000 batters. 
and joining the 300 win club, just on slot and Mike McFarlane. But anyway, I was just saying when the Randy Johnson showed up there, the Major League Baseball said best case scenario that the season will start two weeks later. So the season was supposed to begin on March 26th with the first regular season game. So best case, it begins two weeks later. Worst case, our entire 2020 season is not played at all. So we'll have to keep tabs on that. There's Mark McGuire. Steve Lombardozzi and Rich Renteria is the last one right there. All right, two packs left. I try not to talk too much about the news of the day in these Throwback Thursdays because then the video doesn't age that well. Like, you might be watching this in, like, 10 years, and it's 2030. And I mean, it's just a distant memory, um, this whole pandemic that's going on right now. I can't even say the C word because YouTube demonetizes videos for it. Uh, the uh, name of the disease causing this whole pandemonium. There's Bert Bly 11. He's a Hall of Famer. Chris Sabo. Okay, so Chris Sabo's got two cards in the set. One must be his high number, and then that one he's just about ready. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he just got tagged out and is disappointed or what. And John Davis is the last one. So last pack here for Jay. See if we can find that Griffey. We got Louis Meadows on the top. Bill Long, there's Sid Bream, Ricky Jordan, Felix Jose, about three Felix Jose cards so far. There's Tim Flannery, Calvin Schiraldi, Scott Bradley, Mike Schooler, who's now a gym teacher out in Wall. Hey, we got him, Ken Griffey Jr. There we go, Jay, congratulations. Now let's just take a minute and get this bad boy one touched up for you. So, took two videos to find it, but finally we found Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. Did this back in December of last year, actually 2018, I think it was, hoping to find the Griff, but wasn't able to. Now, we got him. Ken Griffey Jr., rookie card, Hall of Famer, the kid, arguably the best player of our era growing up. Everybody was all about Ken Griffey Jr., had a great career, got a little bit sidetracked when he went to the Reds with injuries and hamstring problems, but there it is, Ken Griffey Jr., rookie card. Everybody was so into this card back in the day. Take a look at it. And uh, for those of you who like to read about uh, the, the backs of the cards, there you go. We can take a look at that. Upper Deck really on the ball with getting Ken Griffey Jr. as the number one card in their set. They uh, saw the hype. They saw how good he was in the minor leagues, made him the number one card. Some companies missed the boat on Griffey. For example, 89 score. Didn't put him in this, their set. You had to buy score uh, traded to get him. And 89 Tops really missed the boat on Griffey. Didn't put him in the set either. Had to wait and get him in the traded set as well. Fleer and Donruss, though, also, they had him in the regular set, which uh, is great. And Upper Deck, this is a staple. Best card of 1989 by far. Ken Griffey Jr., 1989 Upper Deck. And it goes to JV in his last pack. Congratulations, Jay, on that one. Good get right there. So we go down to our last stack, and it's for Robert. Robert, good luck. Hopefully you have the same luck as Jay just did, and maybe we'll get two Griffies. I mean, we've already seen two Smoltzes, two Omar Vizquel's, probably about three Felix Jose cards. Let's see if we can find another one. It could happen. I mean, heck, we've even seen two of the same card in the same pack. How crazy would that be to get two Griffies in the same pack? All right, so, Robert, we have... Jose Okendo there, Tracy Jones, Lance Parrish, Ed Hearn, Kenneth Burkfeld, Roger Clemens, seven-time Cy Young Award winner, Rick Aguilera. Looks like he wasn't ready for his picture to be taken there, but they took it anyway and said, eh, let's put that one on the card. Must not have had very good uh, other options out there for Aguilera. Nice closer for the Mets there for a few years. Ron Hassey's on the back. Ruben Sierra used to like Ruben Sierra back in the day. I remember making it a point to get his rookie cards from the 1987 set. So there's Brett Saberhagen, who was a, uh, a lights-out pitcher, especially on the game RBI 1 for the NES. He had that side-winding delivery on that game, and he was basically impossible to hit. My brother and I would play that game a lot, very, very often. There's Greg Maddox, back when he was with the Cubbies, before going over to the Braves and taking off, although he started to take off with the Cubbies near the end of his reign there with the Cubs. His last year with the Cubs was 1992. And then it was just uh, all uphill for Greg after heading over to Atlanta, and they um, dominated the 90s over in Atlanta. 
no doubt about that. But only won one World Series for it back in 1995. That was it for them. There's Fred McGriff, like that card a lot. McGriff should be a Hall of Famer. I think most of you would probably agree with that statement. With his just shy of 500 home runs, 400, what, 93 home runs. No evidence of steroid use. I mean, Fred McGriff was very, very skinny compared to all the other guys in that era. But he still got it done. So I'm hoping that one day we'll see the crime dog in the hall. There's Wally Joyner making a little flip there. Steve Sachs does some nice work on the MLB network. Earl Hershiser, who once threw, what was it? Was it 56 and a third consecutive scoreless innings? Some absolutely insane number in the 50s. Sil Capusano, who once broke up a no-hitter. I forget which pirate had it. It might have been a Doug Drabick no-hitter in the ninth inning with like two outs, and I remember hating him for that. So I wanted Doug to get a no-hitter. Doug Dravik was my favorite pitcher for a time there back in the uh, like early 1990s. Speaking of Pirates, Gary Redis. There's Jose Bautista. Not the Jose Bautista you all know and love. Not Joey Bats. Although Joey Bats is trying to make a comeback as a pitcher down in the, the Dominican Republic right now. He has been out of baseball for two years. That's a nice Don Manley, by the way. Supposedly he's got a really wicked slider. Maybe he'll catch on in a bullpen somewhere sometime whenever baseball does come back it's a really weird feeling right now isn't it like baseball isn't going to happen so for those of you that are younger welcome to how we felt when we were uh, or when i was what 14 years old when baseball stopped that was an awful feeling baseball just stopped on august 11th 94 that was it no more games no world series they went on strike and uh, i don't know it's kind of the same feeling right now although at least um, now we know that they might be back at some point. Hopefully, and it's just a slight delay, but 1994, as the uh, days went by, it became more and more likely and obvious that there would be no World Series. And it was, uh, you had to feel really bad for some guys like Tony Gwynn could have hit 400 that year. Matt Williams could have hit 61 or 62 home runs. And those guys had their career seasons. Cut short. Two packs left. Robert, let's see if we can get you a Griffey. Jay got it in his last pack of his stack. Maybe you'll get the same one. Let's see. Neil Allen, Mike Kruko, Jose Uribe. I'm trying to keep these holograms from falling out on me. I kind of like how they standardized the holograms to the size of the card the following year. Not the fall, was it? No, 91 they did that. 1990 upper deck, they were still smaller, but they were at least square shaped. This is the last pack of this Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new here. We'd love to have you back for more of these videos. We typically do these older boxes every Thursday. And uh, after you're done hitting the subscribe button, please hit the thumbs up button. I would very much appreciate it. Now let's see if we can go out and get that Griffey and go out with a bang here. Overall, successful video because we did pull the Griffey. For Jay, a couple cards left. Tom Prince, Chris Brown. Last card of the day is Mackie Sasser. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to the participants in this break. We'll be live on Saturday night with another break. It's going to be a case break of Stars and Stripes, the brand-new product from Panini with five autographs per box. We'll be live again with Top's opening day, Monday afternoon around 5.30 p.m., I uh, so hope to see you guys all there for that. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Wherever you are, make sure that you stay safe, stay smart, wash your hands, don't touch your face. We'll all be fine. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all tomorrow.